Chris Lee and Blaine Gilmer of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes. We are previewing every single game of week 11 in the Southeastern Conference. Of course, we do this every week. Blaine, today we've got quite a matchup of two teams that had very different weekends. LSU gets the biggest win its program has had since winning a national title, upsetting Alabama and Baton Rouge. Meanwhile, Arkansas while everybody else is watching two huge games, Liberty came in to Fayetteville, jumped all over the Razorbacks. Arkansas had a dramatic comeback late. Honestly, I thought K.J. Jefferson scored a two-point conversion to tie the game. The officials did not see it that way. Arkansas, which has played a brutal schedule, now has a very tough game coming up against LSU. Oh, yeah, and and, you know, that's not the only place that uh, a fit bad officiating abounded in the SEC this past weekend. It seemed like there was some bad officiating yeah. in different different areas throughout. But here's the deal. Arkansas is a program under Sam Pittman, I think, that is always going to play hard regardless. They do get a home game here. It is an early kickoff. LSU has struggled with the early kickoffs uh, this year. You look, go back and look at that Tennessee game, even at home. Uh, not the not the greatest, but hey, LSU has a lot to play for uh, here as they now control their own destiny in the SEC West. So it's just going to be interesting to see if uh, Sam Pittman's uh, club kind of can get the morale, the spirits back up, and uh, get ready to to play a home game against a team that is riding on cloud nine right now. Like you said, LSU when the Tigers have the ball. They average 34.8 points a game. Arkansas giving up 30.7 a game. We've we've had a lot of conversation about the Razorback defense. LSU has only lost three fumbles. Arkansas has recovered five. LSU has only thrown three picks. So ball security, big deal for the Tigers this year. That's been a big key to success lately. Arkansas has registered five picks. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Arkansas has sacked the quarterback 28 times. LSU, which plays with freshman tackles, plural, has given up 32 sacks. Okay, when LSU runs the ball, we take sacks out of this. The Tigers averaging, boy, very underrated running attack, and a lot of that's Jaden Daniels, averaging 5.8 yards per rush. Arkansas giving up 5.1. Much has been made of Arkansas's porous pass defense, and when the ball is in the air, it is certainly porous. But if you take the sacks out of it, the Razorbacks giving up 7.4 yards per pass, LSU only averaging 6.4. So not a a huge downfield threat in terms of what LSU has done in terms of consistent explosiveness. But as you've noted before, and I've heard other people back this up since, LSU has got a very, very talented core of receivers. And we all know that when you don't get to the quarterback, uh, the Razorbacks on the back end, and and again, they've had some injuries, but they have had a handful trying to cover receivers. I think LSU has the best wide receiving core in the SEC. I was hammered by our live show crew. Uh, and, hey, you can come in and debate things with us on Wednesday nights in the live shows. Subscribe to the channel every uh, Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We go live and do that. But I am in the corner. I'm waving the flag for LSU having the best wide receiving core over Tennessee in the SEC because Kayshawn Booty, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr., Kyron Lacey, I mean, the, the names go on and on. And Mason oh, by, Taylor, too, if you want to throw in a tight saying. end. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, by the way, let's throw in the son of an NFL Hall of Famer that just had his coming out party on national mm-hmm. uh, television who's played great uh, a lot uh, this year for, for LSU. But now he has a, a clutch touchdown catch. He comes up with a two-point conversion. I think that LSU's offense – and the system that Brian Kelly wants to run is really starting to come into its own. And I think Arkansas is going to have to definitely find ways to uh, get Jaden Daniels sacked, not just not just flush him out of the pocket because that's where he's most dangerous. They're going to have to rush and, and find ways. Uh, Barry Odom's going to have to find ways to 
get after Jaden Daniels in a controlled way um, because when you do flush Jaden Daniels out of the pocket, sometimes that's your, you know, pick your poison right there because when he gets out and he's able to extend plays, that's when he becomes most dangerous. So I think this is a tall task. Uh, for this Arkansas defense going into into this game. And like you said, uh, you know, we've done other previews. We did an Alabama preview. They're, you know, kind of out of it now with uh, with two losses in the SEC. And this is certainly a disappointing outcome here this past week for Arkansas. But I do think the program's in a little bit different place where they're still in, in that ascension mode trying to go up and climb to the next level. So I, I don't think you'll have to worry about Arkansas playing hard for Sam Pittman. But, man, you, 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 you can only play with the players that you have right now. And I still think there's a, there's a talent disparity when it comes to the back end of Arkansas's defense versus mm-hmm. the wide receivers and tight ends of LSU's offense. Okay, before we get to the other side of the matchup, shout out to our presenting sponsor, Stakes. Predict sports better than the crowd for a chance to win NFTs with Stakes. Players can cement their sports predictions against friends, other fans, and influencers forever. Don't let your sports genius go overlooked. Join Stakes and have the best predictions captured in the moment. Head to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14 Use our invite code SOUTHEASTERN14 and get a double welcome bonus. The app is free to join, free to play. You can win stuff. You can have a lot of fun. What's not to like? Go to Stakes, have some fun, and help out those who help us as well. Okay, when Arkansas has got the ball, a a very balanced offense, very much run first, but of course Arkansas is, is fairly efficient in the passing game too. Led by K.J. Jefferson, the Hogs averaged 32.1 points a game. LSU gives up 22.2. LSU has recovered eight fumbles. Arkansas has lost seven. Arkansas has thrown five picks. LSU has registered six picks. Sacks, LSU has made 19. Arkansas has given up 18. Um, Arkansas, the the run pass balance, exactly two-thirds. Arkansas does 45 rush plays a game, 30 pass plays. And again, we do rush plays as we take sacks out and we count them as pass plays. So with that, Arkansas averaging 5.5 yards per rush play, LSU giving up 4.8. Arkansas averaging 7.8 yards per pass play, LSU getting up 6.2. I think everybody's going to jump all over LSU in this matchup in terms of of who to take, but that rushing stat there and and the way that Arkansas can run with Rocket Sanders and with Jefferson uh, probably should give people a little bit of pause here. I mean, uh, just a few weeks ago, obviously LSU ended up winning the the game in a a handedly fashion against Florida, but just a couple weeks ago, Florida had over 200 yards rushing against uh, against this LSU team. Now they they did have great success. That defensive front of it holding down a great uh, rushing attack of, of Ole Miss. They held Alabama in check rushing the ball, honestly. Um, so I think that it's a LSU defensive front, B.J. Ojolari. Harold Perkins, Chris, has been mm, a great player. And a, a difference maker, he's he's really started to play more and more, really came <clears throat> onto the scene in that Ole Miss game. Uh, really flashed out uh, against Ole Miss and had a had a tremendous uh, performance against Alabama this past week. I think that it's going to be okay. Can can the players, uh, the guys like Ojolari, the guys like Harold Perkins, can Brian Kelly uh, and the the LSU staff formulate a plan that is going to say, okay, you know, Rocket Sanders the legs of of K.J. Jefferson and the other host of running backs that Arkansas has are they – we're going to take them away first and then force K.J. Jefferson to be accurate down the field and beat you. And, listen, this was an an LSU group that had to deal with uh, Alabama's wide receivers this past week and made its fair share of plays uh, down the stretch. Um, So I do do think that even though it's an early kick and it's on the road – uh, I think you're going to see LSU, an LSU team that's kind of 
peaking at the right time offensively and defensively. And hey, like I said, this is this is them still playing to to punch a ticket to Atlanta, right? They they have a lot out in front of them. And uh, but hey, Rocket Sanders is a gifted gifted back, and all it takes is a lack of focus here and there, just one or two missed tackles, and all of a sudden Rocket Sanders and that that rushing attack for Arkansas has a big day. So I'm very, very excited to see how this matchup plays out on the field. Okay, some miscellaneous stuff. Uh, We always look into penalties and special teams. Not not a lot of difference here. LSU getting charged with 60 yards of penalties a game. Arkansas hit with 64. Special teams, uh, these may be the two worst special teams units in the league. Um, Arkansas, as of a couple weeks ago, I know was ranked in the bottom 20. LSU says, hold my beer. Uh, LSU was ranked 128 by FEI special teams metrics, which I don't think that's been updated as we do this on Sunday night. Uh, but we had Matt Moscona on our show last week, and he talked probably for about two minutes about how bad they had been in every area. Of course, you know, at, at LSU, been able to convert extra points. Uh, you know, probably beats Florida State in, in that postseason discussion, which LSU, by the way, still firmly in the playoff hunt, but would be a lot more firmly in it if it weren't for that. Uh, anyway, th- those are just some things to watch, and I know this is where you look to stats from covers, too, for trends and, and things like that. So what's standing out here? Tigers are 6-1-1 one and one against the spread in their last eight games in November. Uh, so they they play their best ball in November when it comes to covering the covering the spread at least it seems, and they're six two and one against the spread in their last nine conference games. So they're playing, they're you know they're playing well in the in the SEC, especially under Brian Kelly here, um, getting things going. Uh, the Razorbacks though, Chris, they're they're known for a little bit of a bounce back team under Sam Pittman because the Razorbacks are seven and zero against the spread in their last seven games after scoring less than 20 points in their previous game. So they were held to 19 against against Liberty. Look for uh, Arkansas to maybe come back and and have a stronger offensive performance, or at least that's been the the history under Sam Pittman after after games where they, they don't do as well. So we'll see uh, which trend gets bucked there. But right now the, the number is LSU – a three and a half point road favorite. Typically, Vegas accounts for, you know, three ish points is the is the way things go for home field advantage. So, really, saying LSU is maybe a a touchdown type favorite here, and um, how things go. So, uh, I think that spread, honestly, with the way these two teams are playing right now, maybe a little bit low. Chris, I would be leaning towards uh, LSU to win outright and also to to cover that three and a half. Okay, yeah, it was two and a half, I think, when we started recording these tonight. Over under you're seeing around sixty two and a half. Is that what you have? Uh I, I don't have the over under in front of me. I just have I just have L S U minus okay. three and a half is on FanDuel. So it's it, it, okay. that's where I got it up up to on that. Well, and these things bounce around a little bit. We record them normally on Sunday nights and Monday mornings. That's what I had going into this. Okay, that implies a final score of 33-30 to 30 in LSU's favor. Ooh, um, that seems if, like if you take, a arm burner now. <laughs> it, it does. And and if you here's the weird thing. If you take what the teams have done this year in terms of what they've scored and given up, um, the over-under should be 60. I, I'm not buying it. I, I, I think I kind of like the over in this game. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and here's another thing. Arkansas motivation. Okay, Sam Pittman is good at getting his team up. LSU, though, that game put LSU back into national relevancy. If you're looking at 538's playoff odds, LSU is a 15% shot to make the college football playoff according to 538's model. If LSU wins out, that goes all the way up to 85%. If LSU wins the Arkansas game, that goes up to 20%. Of course, LSU has got game. That doesn't make sense. UAB and Texas a and oh, okay, what they're factoring in is, is facing Georgia. Yeah, I mean. In, if, in the if, SEC if, title game. So If, if LSU is the SEC champions and they're two, they've all, they don't have any more losses than they have right now, if they don't slip up, stub their toe against either Arkansas, UAB, or Texas A&M, 
LSU is getting in the playoff. I mean, that's just that's just yeah. how it goes. You're not going to hold the SEC champion out unless they had you know probably more than more than two losses. That again, this is not totally unprecedented. Back in 2017, if Auburn would have beaten Georgia, they were playing such good football that Auburn was going to make the playoff that that year. Uh, but yeah. Georgia ended up ended up winning the SEC championship and then going on to lose to Alabama in the national championship that year. But when it comes down to it, ultimately, I think this committee is going to look at how you're playing right now. And and Chris, it's hard to argue that there's any team that's playing with more confidence and uh, and more excitement in their program right now that, than LSU is. Well, let's rewind to some things we said three months ago before the season started. And I said there's two teams in particular that I don't think I'd want to be playing late in the season. I'd rather play them in the front half of the season. One was LSU and one was Florida. Both teams are playing really good ball. The reason I said that had coaching changes. And and there were also going to be culture changes, major culture changes at both those places. LSU has always had talent. It may not be you know, 2019, 2019 LSU talent, uh, but but it's plenty of talent. And Brian Kelly is an elite coach. He's got LSU playing at a very high level. I feel like the Tigers get better every week. That that Tennessee game seems like eons ago at this point. Um, I think I like LSU to cover. Three and a half doesn't seem like a lot. Arkansas is just going to be fighting for this point. To, to get to a bowl, um, I'm, I'm thinking I like the Tigers to win, to cover, and I think I like the over in this one too. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm right there with you. I think uh, I think LSU's just got everything to to play for right now, and I think it's going to be uh, going to be a a contest where they're they're trying to seize a hold of that opportunity and 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 really move forward with their SEC West destiny here. Okay, like we said, every week we pick every SEC game. It's the best way to catch those. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those. We will have every single preview up probably by noon Monday. We'll do our power rankings on Monday. And guess what? College basketball season starts Monday night. We have a lot of college basketball content coming up. We've already had a ton. In fact, we've previewed every single SEC team for this season. So anyway, lots to watch on our channel. again. Best way to get that, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon at Southeastern 14.